you want your kid to get into med school or you want to get into med school, mm. don't be that person that is just like studying is really not social and stuff. Like right. for me, like I, you know, if I think of the list of people that I would want to punch in the face, <laughs> like me 10 years ago is at the top of that list for sure. Like probably right. like Trump and then me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, there's actually an interesting topic that I want to talk about, which is, you know, we mentioned it before, but it's these myths that people have about huh. what med students are and what um, doctors are like, yeah, the, the type of people. And I think that this is, I think this is really funny because there's actually a lot of myths about this and they're so wrong most of the time. Yeah. Okay. Like myth number one, med students just study. Like <laughs> people that get into it, like, yeah. <laughs> well, look, I will say they do study. They do. Yeah. And there, there are people in my cohort, there are about what, uh, almost 300 in my cohort. There are still people in my cohort, when we all sit down in that lecture theater for a test, I'm still seeing new faces, <laughs> like one after one. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I swear it's been two, three years, I've never seen you in my life. I will con- yeah, you'll be in fifth year and you'll be paired up with someone and you're right. like, are you like are you a new like <laughs> yeah. you're my you've been in my house in the last in? five yeah. years right yeah. right right um and uh, there are several reasons for that maybe they're just like studying at home they don't they might not be very sociable they don't come to uni they've got their own things going on outside some of them are older students as well um but yeah like those guys might be the ones that fit that myth or stereotype, the stereotype that yeah. that's all they do but for the most part the, at least the part that we see when we're in med that's false definitely false yeah like more false than for a lot and of other degrees. Yeah. No, no, no. Like oh. for even you know, and I think it's because med is small. Yeah. It's possible to have a class, a total year event mm. every however often, mm. you know. And whereas, like, if you were in commerce or engineering, like, how are you going to mobilize ten thousand students? Right. It's just yeah. so it ends up being actually a lot more social and tight knit. Mm. Um, and so, I think, you know, like honestly, it's hard. To not sound racist when I say this, but like mm. all the Asian students mm. that are coming into mid, that are just like, and their parents are like so obsessed with studying. It's just like, when I see those students, yeah. I do not think that does not, that image does not fit the image of doctor and mid student in my mind. No. That image fits the image of a studious loser. Right. That's probably going to fail right, because right, their interview right. is really shitty or they're just yeah. like, you know, so the the whole mentality is like, if you don't, if, if you're not a balanced, yeah. social, likable person that is also good at studying and is efficient right. and knows how to work hard. Yeah. That's that like that's the image of a of a doctor and a and a med student, ideally. Yeah, yeah. And people deviate from that in various ways, but that's kind of the core of where everyone at least tries to be. Yeah. I saw a book recently, I can't remember what exactly it was called, but it was weighing up IQ versus EQ. Yeah. And growing up I valued and I've treasured so much IQ and just pure intelligence and yes, intellect because of yeah. that uh, that culture and the stigma of Same. wow you got a nine GPA you got this grade that grade yeah. scholarship this that but you get like, a pat on the back for doing well you in do, your school you do you don't get a pat on the back for like, being a good a nice friend. guy yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? nope. and that's bro- totally broken I think the right. culture is like exactly yeah yeah especially in Asia like Korea China India it's just like so broken like mm. uh, to the point where i'd say that if you if you're listening to this if you're a student or if you're a parent listening to this if you fit the cultural norm of your country right you're doing it wrong <laughs> that's, so, that's so rough man. like but like to that level <laughs> yeah. i would just say like if you're that's, fitting the culture, if you're not different true. to the cultural norm you're doing it wrong right like it's gonna do more harm Mm. They're good. And I don't know how many people are going to believe me on this until it's already too late. But I I hope, I cross my fingers and hope someone will you know, take it seriously. Right. And like for the parents if, the, if the, that might be listening to this as well in the future, like you moved away from that. Yes, those exactly. Negatives because you knew because that of, it doesn't right, we produce don't, you don't a good society. To, you don't want to raise your kid in that environment. Yeah. So why bring that same environment and the culture here? Yeah. Yeah. It's like you escape the toxicity. Except for the ones that you, the one that you bring, you carry, and you, you yeah. carry with you, yeah. and then you implant into your child, child as a seed of you think success, mm. but actually ends up being parental resentment. Yeah, and saying this, there are terrific parents out there, yeah. and terrific students and kids as well. But it's, it's like we don't want since we're talking about this myth and the stereotype that results from stuff like this. That's the perspective that we're taking. It's harmful. In this case. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, is. It's, it's detrimental. And uh, you know, even if just a, from a purely utilitarian point of view, you want your kid to get into med school or you want to get into med school, mm. don't be that person that is just like 
studying is really not social and stuff. Like right. for me, like I, you know, if I think of the list of people that I would want to punch in the face, <laughs> like me 10 years ago is at the top of that list for sure. Like probably right. like Trump and then me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, he's impeached now. Oh, well, there's, I, there's still more to it. I mean, I'd still punch him in the face. Yeah, yeah fair. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the level of, how like I, it's a miracle honestly yeah. that I got into medical school based on my personality. Yeah. I was not a likable person. I was not like social at all. That's right. one of the biggest regrets I have in high school is that there's so many people that I probably would have got along with really well in high school yeah. that I just didn't mm. bother to socialize with. Mm. All I did is play games and study. Yeah. You know, it's just like, that's sad. That's sad. It's sad and that's, uh, you know, sorry for, Okay, I, I know a lot of people are gonna, gonna do that. A, a lot of people are gonna feel personally attacked. Yeah. Look, I loved, I didn't love studying. I loved playing games. It was good. I had a lot of fun. It was like, I'm, I'm looking forward to playing more games in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to soften the blow. No, no, but like, you know, the EQ is, is yeah. important. And as I've gotten older, I realized so much more that EQ is not just as important. It's more important and so much more important that it's ridiculous how much more important EQ is giving to IQ. Like to the level where as long as your IQ meets a, a minimum threshold, right? EQ is the only thing that matters from that point yeah, onwards. Yeah, yeah. As For long as you're not an idiot. Progression. Yeah. Yeah, as long as you're, you're sufficiently smart enough, yeah. above that, all EQ, EQ all the way. Right. Yeah, 10 to one ratio. Yeah. And I'm sure we're gonna have several more talks about social capital and relationships and and maintain and that all that, but there's yeah, there is a there is a particular myth. I don't know how universal this myth is, but I know that there is a myth, especially around like um, my uh, group, I guess, went in like in high school was like if you are like if you have like a lot of relationships or if you're like dating a lot or if you, I guess it's almost related to the social aspect. If you're like one of those. Re like really social people, even to like a romantic level, mm, mm. then you don't get into med school, like doctors or medicine. Oh, yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. You know, there's kind mm. of that stereotype of like, what type of relationshipy type of person that is. And I can empirically tell you that that is definitely False. not the case. Yeah. Yeah, I mean like if you're, if you're like really sleazy, that just tells you more about your <laughs> EQ and social skills. Yeah, yeah. But like- Regardless of medicine, just as a person. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've had conversations with parents that mm. are like, I don't want my son to be in a relationship because people that have relationships in high school don't get into med school. And I'm just like, number one, no. Yeah. Like number two, no. Mm. Number three, explain to me the reason why that could be the case. Mm. Like what is the possible logical reason why someone that actually has a relationship wouldn't get into medical school? Like, I can, because I understand where, where they're coming from as well. I'm sure you do as well. And, yeah. and most people do in terms of, I guess, first of all, time. And look, thinking about it, not selfishly from what you are aiming for and achieving your goal, but thinking about your relationship as well. You want to be able to dedicate a, a proper amount of time and you want to be able to actually show your love for this person. If you're, if you're serious about this. He's going to sneeze. <laughs> oh, God. Um, Sorry. So you're saying... Um uh, yeah, not a, like not at the time, but from the social aspect, from a life point of view. Yeah, life point of view, and like to to properly be in a relationship and to commit yourself in a, in a relationship and do your part, you need to invest time, and mm. that's going to be time that, in some cases, does it, it's going to take away from time Something that else. you could use to study or to socialize or for your own self and stuff, and that's there. The other part of and that's something you need to learn. And that's something you need to learn. learn. And that comes with yeah. maturity. That comes with maturity well. and experience and actually yes. al being allowed to make potential mistakes as long as they're not massive mistakes. And right. it's not going to be a massive mistake. Yeah. And in saying that, I therefore understand why parents would say that like, you know, being in a relationship at high school or in first year uni can prevent their chances of, of getting yeah. into medicine and yeah. stuff. And that makes sense to me. It, it but it's sense. a very, very narrow view i think that's yeah. selective and it assumes like the worst case scenario but right and it's also very specific to the person that's yeah. in the relationship yeah if they're a mature person i can think of several first year students that are way more mature than people my age or like even older than me really that have yeah. much better understanding of life in the greater scheme of things that being in a relationship might actually be supportive for them i'd say i'd say there's another addition to that that getting into a relationship in first year is also uh, that, that's that, dodgy that's scary <laughs> because 
this is a whole other person's life that you're, that you're like incorporating with yourself and integrating along with your whole like academic goals and everything like that. So I will say, I, for, I mean, I'm talking from personal experience, not from myself, but from like other friends that I've seen and stuff, those that are already in relationships and had that supportive um, uh, uh, take or perspective on the relationship itself did okay. And, and they got into yeah, they're, they're it, happy at the end. And of it. it's really individual. Is the, yeah, is the main thing is, is that it is. You know, if you if you're not someone that if you like, just be honest with you. Like, are you someone that's mature enough that you can actually have self control and like study and, or are you just gonna be like obsessing about this person and then just like yeah. wasting yeah. your entire life? Just you know, just make that decision and just be mature about that. How? Because I think retrospectively, I could kid myself. I I could. Not kill myself. I say I could kid myself. Like I could, I, I just be, be clear with it. Um, I might have been able to convince myself for my initial like um, yeah, thing yeah, that, true, that I, I really want to be this person, that I like this person. And I might falsely convince myself that I'm doing the right thing and I'm taking a mature decision and everything. And again, like- Yeah, so the caveat is that the bias is always going to be there. You're always yeah. going to think better of yourself. And I, I mean, I guess- yeah. Maybe, you know, this is another sort of thing that's like, well, I would say, you know, if you're in first year, you're, you're like, just, just, just avoid it. You mm -hmm. know, like as a rule of, th like if you're, if you're getting into something new, yeah. just like. Look, like it's your entire life. If yeah. you really want to do mid, I, I, the way I thought about it is like, this is, this is the like make or break point between whether I'm going to do this for the rest of my life or not. And of course, things are going to change later yeah. on. It's a, that's still to some extent narrow-minded and stuff. But um, I think if it's if it's worthwhile, you can hold it off. Yeah, yeah, and also like it's just the level of a sort of uncertainty. Like you've got yeah, already so, so much, much to deal with. Yes, you don't have to add on more yeah. complication of yeah. things. And so mm. uh, I would just say, don't be too you know hasty about it. Yeah. But uh, the, the main point is that look, there is no sort of yes, no answer on this relationship thing. That's a myth. Mm. Yeah. Um, I got uh, a myth, and I, th I'm also about, I think you'd be able to better to answer this, um, that a lot of people, a lot of my um, students and stuff that we mentored and tutored over the years will say, I, I want to be a doctor because I like talking to people and I like spending time with my patients and stuff and getting to know them and stuff. In the actual hospital setting, how much time do doctors really spend with patients? Okay, yeah, let's, we're gonna, we'll have a whole <laughs> discussion about like sure. the reality <laughs> of medicine as right. well as like why I want to be a doctor and the reasoning yeah. behind that. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that differently, but the, sh the short answer is not a lot. Yeah. yeah. I think another myth is that med students are like geniuses. No. Yeah, so med students are smart enough yeah. and they work smart enough yeah. and they're efficient enough mm. and they have good work ethic. Mm. But the actual pure intelligence, and I know this more and more now with all the academic coaching we've been doing, mm. is that a student that can, you know, is getting like Bs or Cs, mm. They have the technical ability. They're technique limited in a lot of ways. Perspective right. limited, habit limited in a lot yeah. of ways, or family limited in a lot mm. in some ways. Mm. Um, to reach the higher grades, mm. it's not natural in intelligence. Like generally speaking, if you have gotten to a point where you're like overall rank score to be eligible for entering into university is mm. high enough, mm. your like your, your university entrance is there. Mm. You're probably intelligent enough. <clears throat> to do it, it's going to be a technique thing after that. It would be a technique thing, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously being like a genius is going to help, obviously. Mm. But I think, you know, like, uh, you know, how common is it when you get into medical school, everyone's like, they first of all, you're introduced as a medical student. Right. It's like your your non medical friends will be like, hey, you're like this is Neil. Yeah. You know he's he's a he's med student, ah! and everyone's like, whoa, yeah. like, you know you must be super genius or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh my oh, god, oh my, like yeah. you know, like to the point where I would say most med students hate talking about what they study. Yes. Like I had whole communication frameworks built around trying to avoid that conversation yeah. of what do you do? I also think like the 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 meme has sort of changed from being like, uh, I'm Neil and I'm a med student. Just by the way, like I had to say- I don't know like, many people that are like- No one, no one does that anymore, but everyone thinks that we do. I don't know if it's because I'm hanging out with people that aren't douchebags. <laughs> yeah, that too. Or yeah. if like it's <laughs> truly changed, but generally speaking, it's just like, hey, I'm Neil. Uh, and then when the conversation of university or something comes up, I'm just like, oh, hey, hey did you see the news about like, <laughs> yeah, I just yeah, changed, yeah. like I do yeah. not want to talk about that because I, I hate that it's conversation. It's coming, it's coming. Oh, and what do you study? I study med. 
Yeah, and it's yeah. just and you know there are different ways to um you know yeah, people yeah, yeah. people word it in a way that makes it more confusing. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. and more uh, ambiguous and yeah, just like tone like, it down a bit. Instead of saying like what do you do, you're like oh I'm a med student. Yeah, which would be how the most efficient way to communicate it. Yes. Honestly, yeah, they're like oh I, I'm studying. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, what, what do you, you study? What do you study? Oh, uh, in healthcare, you know, medicine. Yeah, like, it is yeah. like you, you don't say like med school. You just say like medicine, hope, hoping that they think it's something else. And inevitably, but actually, you know what? That I've realized it makes it worse because yeah. it just draws it out even right. longer. Yeah, you yeah, might as yeah, well yeah. just be like, yeah, yeah, I'm a med student, but I don't really like talking about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, actually yeah. the most efficient way that's to like true, get it actually. and just get it over yeah, and yeah, done yeah, with. Yeah, yeah. Because the inevitable conversation is like, oh yeah, you do med, like, oh that's cool, like. What do you what what type of doctor do you want to be or really like what specialty do you want to do? And know. it's just like, oh god, I hate this conversation. <laughs> even, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just like all the aunties and uncles that at a family friend gathering or something like. Oh, yeah, so. it's such a like. I want to have like a printout that I just hand people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, right before in yeah. the morning before you go out. Yeah, and then uh, just avoid like. So, I think yeah, yeah and that's in itself a, a myth, right? Is that like mm. med students are just way to just always put it out there. Right. Um, yeah. But yeah, like that label is something that just becomes part of your identity. It, like, it, it, it is something that does become part of your identity. Like even me having quit clinical practice, mm. I still see myself as fundamentally part of my identity is like that of a medical person, mm. right? Even if I'm not a um, clinically, you know, currently active doctor. Right. I still see myself as a medical person with a medical perspective and a medical background. And like everything I do in my life is like of a medical person doing that. Like I, I'm a medical person doing a podcast. I'm a medical person running a business. Like mm. it's still that, it's just that it's a, more identities get added to it, but yeah, yeah, it's the and sort of foundation. That's by no means like taking away from everything else that you are. And that's not going to be, we're not speaking like priority. Like number one, I'm a med student. Number yeah. two, I'm a, uh, entrepreneur or something like that. Yeah, it, yeah. but it just it, it's it's it is part of it. But yeah. having that label kind of added there is yeah. something that is sort of mm. you know we don't want to really. It, it's it, it's inconvenient to have that sort of associated. Mm. And you know when people introduce you, you get introduced as whatever. And pe- everyone starts asking you their healthcare related questions, right? Oh, I've got this rash, blah blah blah. And yeah. it's like number one, His, that's another like, I don't know anything about this rash, right? Uh, and number two, like <laughs> frankly. Frankly, I don't really even care. Right. Uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like you should just see your GP. See your GP, yeah. yeah That's like, the best advice I think we can give as med students. If you're worried, yeah. see your GP. Yeah. If you're really worried, go to emergency department. Right. Yeah. That's it. Because I might probably do more harm than good yeah. in giving you my, like, incompetent advice. Because, like... Like I said, like you learn so much in the clinical field itself. Yeah. And that's that's where the majority of your actual applications are going to be yeah. from. Yeah. Really. I mean, honestly, really, if you're a general member of the public asking this, don't ask a med student for advice or no. their opinion unless they're at least fifth year. At least fifth year. Yeah. At that point, they know enough to say, I don't know. Yeah. And then when they're a trainee intern, they know enough to probably triage whether <laughs> it's urgent or not. Right. And then if they're an actual doctor, yeah. then they can probably give you an opinion about something. But most yeah. of the time, they'll still say like, look, this is what I think, but you can, you know, see your yeah. GP if you're yeah. worried about it. Yeah. So like, you know, unless you're talking to like a specialist, right. generally speaking, or like a training, yeah. you know, registrar of that program, yeah. their opinion is, is not, is taken with a mountain of salt. Right. I, I will also add though, like I am guilty of this myself. And like, as far as I want to take these like real life examples where my mum or my dad has like a, I don't know if it's like a bite or like a small yeah. rash or something like that. You get and really they're like, yo, what, what is this? Doctor. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you're my science experiment right now yeah. in front of me. And sometimes I'll, I'll say like, hey, this is what I think it is, but still go see the doctor. Yeah. And then when you go back to the doctor and it's either right or wrong what I said, you feel good if it's right. But still, go see the doctor. Yeah. Yeah. What anyway. Um, Myth that you have to study 24-7? That you have no yeah. life? Yeah, well, we've myth, already covered that. Myth as a pre-med student that you can only choose between socializing, sleep, and study. Yeah, no, that's actually not true. So there's, a, there's actually a meme like floating around. It's like, pick two. Yeah, that's, that's where I got it from. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pick, but it's like, yeah, pick two if you suck. Yeah. <laughs> if yeah. you're inefficient, you pick two. Right. But if you're good, you pick all three, and then you and can probably pick two more. Right. Like, exactly. I mean, okay, when I was a, like, caveat is that, like, I was obsessed with efficiency. So, like, I'm probably a, a still is. Yeah, I'm still <laughs> obsessed with efficiency. Yeah. Um, so, I, like, really went into this heavy. <laughs> right, but, right. 
you know, I was like, okay, studying for like med, mm. being a med student, I was tutoring like 20 to 30 hours a week mm. uh, and eventually setting up a company. Mm. I went to the gym like four, five times a week. So roughly hour and a half, two hours mm. each time. Um, I was in a relationship. Mm. I would socialize with friends, like go out and do stuff. I, I danced a lot. So I danced like six, 10 hours a week. Um, I would sleep. Mm. Like I've got good sleep. Right. Um, and I still managed to like, you know, there are certain really time consuming things that I had to cut out. Mm. And I think that's one of the things is that all my hobbies became stuff Maybe. that I could control. <laughs> yeah, like I couldn't play games. Like, right. I, I, like the number of games I played in year 13 yeah. is probably quadruple the number of games I've played since year 13 mm. combined because mm. uh, that's super time consuming. And uh, like I used to be really at the art. Mm. You know, I would spend three days just working on a single art piece when I was in high school. Really? Wow. Yeah. Uh, and now I, I do very little art related stuff. So mm. some super time consuming things I've had to take out. So if, if I was really still into art or like I used to play more guitar, which I don't mm. much anymore. <laughs> uh we I think have to end up just prioritizing the ones that are like the most important. For me, the really time consuming ones weren't as important for mm, me. Mm. Uh whereas someone if you're really into art, like yeah, you can definitely keep doing that. You just have to say like, okay, my Saturday is an art day or something. Mm. Like you just have to book out periods of time. Yeah. But it's it's definitely manageable. And I just think again, having done a lot of coaching, the reason people have to choose two of three mm. is that they just don't know how to manage it. They just lack the skill and the strategy on how and the study is the big one, is that study takes up so so much time. If you get increased the speed at which you study, you just free up so right. you mobilize yeah. so much time to do anything else. And there are so many ways to do that, but no one knows. Well, you, yeah, you're just not taught and we yeah. don't, you don't know. And it's it is difficult, but it's very possible. So that's a, a mm. big myth, a huge myth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I mean if, if uh if you've got any uh potential myths that you, you're not sure whether this is true, if this is the reality about either medicine, being a med student or being a doctor, um, and you want us to just myth bust it, then, um, you know, leave Trademark. us. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, not myth bust. Yeah. Uh, if you want us to. Myth break. Myth, myth break. We said we're going to talk about this. In, yeah. what, what do we call this? Uh, <laughs> expectation versus reality. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 if, yeah. You wanna, <laughs> if you want to hear us tell you the reality um, of a myth, in a busting fashion, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, leave a comment below uh, or, or get in touch and we'll, we'll add it to the next episode that we do. Thanks for tuning in to Subcut. If you guys have any suggestions for content, please make sure you send it through. You can get in touch and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, or find us on our website at jttmed.com slash subcut. Subcut is a podcast brought to you by JTT. If you or anyone you know is interested in a career in medicine, make sure to get in touch and check us out at jttmed.com.